Today we'll talk about the management of snake bite. First of all, introduction of poisonous snakes. These are cobras, king cobras, crates, branded crates and vipers and sea snakes. These are the pictures of the snakes showing now venomous snakes. These are poisonous snakes. Bite is not necessarily the same as snake bite poisoning. Now management of snake bite includes first of all we have to give the first aid treatment immediately. Shift the patient to the hospital rapidly clinically assess and see for any resuscitation is required then detailed clinical assessment and species diagnosis is required. Now we have to send the investigation and the necessary lab report we have to the get the whole blood, blood clotting time, time, time done. So, anti-venom treatment to be started, supportive treatment, you have to rehabilitate the patients and you have to treat the chronic complications of the patient. While giving the first aid treatment, you have to ensure you don't have to harm the patient, you have to reassure and you have to pressure immobilize the limb and then shift the patient immediately to the nearby hospital. Always remember that snakes jo hai, they, they can bite for up to one hour after being killed due to intact reflexes uh, look at the pictures how we have to pressure immobilize the bitten limb by the snake in upper limb we have to use the chest arm bandage and in lower limb we have to use a support and ensure that least mobility of the limb is to be ensured <laughs> As soon as the patient reaches the hospital, we have to immediately reassess the patient. We have to look for any signs of hypertension, any signs of shock. We have to see for neurotoxic snake bite. We have to see for any signs of respiratory failure. Single breath count is to be done. Neurological function need to be assessed. We have to see is there sudden deterioration after the release of tourniquet. Is there any cardiac arrest? Can be due to hyperkalemia or rhabdomyolysis. So primarily rapid assessment may you have to assess ki whether there are signs of neurotoxic snake bite or hemorrhagic snake bites. Now you need to ask the patient ki when you are actually bitten by the snake, what was the time, what is the part of the body and have you seen the snake. Now what are the signs of severe snake poisoning? Agar you have identified the species and species as the poisonous and the dangerous one. There is localized swelling and there is rapid extension of that swelling. There is involvement of the lymph nodes. There are systemic symptoms. There is spontaneous bleeding and passage of dark colored urine. Now what are the investigation that you need to set? Immediately you have to get the whole blood clotting time done. You have to send the CBC look for platelet count, hematocrit, urine analysis is to be done. RFTs is to be done and CPK is to be done. Now best is the species specific antidote to the snake venom but it is not readily available. Now what it includes the systemic signs and the local signs. In systemic signs you have got hematological manifestation, you have got neurotoxic signs, you have got cardiotoxic signs, acute renal failure, dark colored urine and lab and investigation shows signs of poisoning. In local you have got the local swelling, there is extension of that swelling there is a swelling of the digit that is being bitten rapid extension of that swelling and development of enlarged lymph nodes in the near vicinity now what is the classification of snake poisoning based upon the severity the doses of anti venom is to be decided grade 0 is when there is no n venomation and then no anti venom is required grade 1 is minimal n venomation there is localized swelling and pain without progression five vials are required in moderate in moderate n venomation or grade 2 there is swelling there is pain there is echimosis at the bitten site and there is extension beyond the site of injury there are mild systemic and lab manifestation and 5 to 10 anti venom vials are required in grade 3 which is the severe n venomation there is marked local reaction marked extension of that swelling, severe systemic manifestations and significant alteration in the lab findings. Now most of the times what happens in the hospitals we don't have the species specific anti-venom readily available. Instead we have to use the multi-species anti-venom the one which is available with us best if it is given within the four hours but even in certain conditions, when it is given up to 2-3 to three weeks, it will take care of the hemostatic abnormalities. 
सो नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज कि वॉट इज द कॉन्ट्रा इंडिकेशन फॉर गिविंग एंटी वेनम नॉर्मली देर इज नो एब्सोल्यूट कॉन्ट्रा इंडिकेशन यू जस्ट हैव टू इंश्योर दैट इट इज प्रॉपरली स्टोर्ड एंड एक्सपेक्टेड टू रिटेन यूजल एक्टिविटी फॉर मेनी मंथ्स एंड एक्सपायरी डेट शुड नॉट बी क्रॉस नाउ वाइल एडमिनिस्ट्रिंग द एंटी वेनम यू हैव टू टेक केयर दैट सीवियर एन एफ आई लैक्स रिएक्शन कैन आकर यू हैव टू कीप रेडी एडनलिन विद यू एंड यू हैव टू आफ्टर यू हैव स्टार्टेड द एंटी वेनम यू हैव टू ऑब्जर्व द पेशेंट फॉर इनिशियल वन आर फॉर एनी सीवियर रिएक्शन और अर्ली रिएक्शंस फॉर एंटी वेनम्स द बेस्ट रूट इज यूर इंट्रावीनस इट शुड प्रेफरेबली बी गिवन बाई आई वी रूट एंड देर इज नो लोकल एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन रिकमेंडेड Now, when the response starts appearing, patient starts feeling better. Spontaneous systemic bleeding stops within 30 minutes. Blood coagulability restored within three to nine hours. In patients with shock and bradycardia, BP starts increasing within 30 to 60 minutes. Neurotoxic envenomation also improves in 30 minutes. Now, based upon the severity, the dose is same in both children as well as adults. Recurrence can occur. Patient envenomation by wipers after initial response. Signs of systemic envenomation may reoccur within 24 to 48 hours, and neurotoxic envenomation may also occur. Now, when antivenom need to be repeated. even if after 6 hours there is persistence of the bleeding or there is brisk bleeding after 1 to 2 hours there is deterioration of the neurotoxic or cardiovascular signs after 1 to 2 hours in neurotoxic snake bites along with anti venom you have to put the patient on ventilator in those with the bulbar or respiratory paralysis along with anticholinesterase neostegmine is to be given in the dose of 0.05 mg per kg every 30 minutes for five doses and then every 2 to 6 hourly now regarding the conservative management it is to be given when no antivenom is available in neurotoxic snake bites with renal failure you have to either manually or mechanically ventilate the patients along with the neostigmine to be given in hemorrhagic manifestation strict bed rest is to be given and transfusion of clotting factors platelets ffps cryoprecipitation fresh whole blood is to be given Now in renal failure dialysis is to be done you have to give the broad spectrum antibiotics to the patients you have to take care of the oliguric renal failure hyperkalemia and any surgical management in case if required you have to take care of that